this is my first IPFS um, thing. I'm at the Falcon Foundation. It was great. I didn't really know what I was going to be seeing, and uh, it was lovely to have sort of an unconference setting for the whole thing. And so I, I just threw something together very quickly. Um, and then after it, Juan said, hell, you should do this to the wider audience. And I'm like, okay, I have to, I don't know how you ended, right? I didn't know you ended with a cage fight with HackMD, right? So I thought maybe, you know, I'm at the Falcoin Foundation, right? At this point, we'd have like fireworks and a, a marching band or something like that, right? Like, like there, it might have been a big deal. I mean, it is still a big deal. You're a big deal, just to, so you you get it, right? But I was worried, like, maybe they would have, like, walk-on music, rather than, like Juan would say, and now Danny O'Brien, and I'd just written this thing, like, badly, and then there would be music, and my fear, like, at three o'clock in the morning, my fear was, if you want to, like, brave this, this is on IPFS, uh, a video that I ripped from YouTube of uh, I'm Living on Dog Food, which was a great Iggy Pop song uh, from the 70s. And I, my fear, if you get one joke out of this whole thing, right, you'll get it on the train later. My fear was that they would start playing I'm Living on Dog Food as I went onto the stage. And the, uh, um, it, it, some of it is about eating dog food. S some of the other lyrics have not aged as well as that. So uh, what I want you to do, when you go back, if the rest of this is actually frankly insulting to you, um, just imagine what it would have been like if I'd walked on playing this music that you're not going to listen to now, and if you listen on the train or the plane, wear, wear headphones, because it would be a really bad idea. Okay, some context um, beyond that. Uh, uh, I joined the Falcon Foundation as senior fellow about two years ago. My background is with the Electronic um, Frontier Foundation. And so I had to do, I, I can't get that anymore. It used to be I'd get a, a round of cheers. And now I say, I'm from Filecoin. And they go, oh yeah, is that a, is that a crypto thing? And I'm like, we can explain. But um, anyway, so my, um, uh, so my context is I came in and I tried to understand these things. And one of the things that really struck me as interesting about the Web3 community was that, um, there was actually, for, for, for people building the decentralized web, there was a lot of use of centralized services, right? There was like people use Slack, people use GitHub and stuff like that. And so I really wanted to engage with what I saw as a different cultural uh, understanding. And because my background is as an activist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, when I want to really interact with people whose, whose opinions that perhaps I don't understand, maybe disagree with a little bit, as an activist, um, the traditional way to do that is to scream at them at the street. And, and so this is me, this is, this, this, I swear this is absolutely true. This is me at East Denver, um, I'm in the line, this is East Denver 2022, which um, they'd scheduled very conveniently in the middle of the Epsilon COVID outbreak. And, uh, and what they did was they had a huge, who was at East Denver? Anyone? Right, you will remember this. They had a huge line and uh, it was sort of um, uh, continuous integration testing, right? What they would do is they would take a COVID test uh, and if you passed that, you were fine. You just went straight into the, oh, that was it. Like you, you had been built, you passed the unit tests, you could go straight in. And I sat on a soapbox and decried at people about the fact that they were using GitHub. I was basically screaming at them that they were, they were sinners. And it went really well. I handed out leaflets, and um, it, w it went pretty well. And this is, this is, <laughs> and people felt guilty, right? This was the funny thing. It's like you're screaming at them. They're going, I know, I know, right? Git is at heart a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. I don't have to use GitHub. It's just easier to use, all right? Um, and, uh, and obviously, my background, is, so... Incidentally, I did in fact get COVID, like everybody else in that line. I may well have had COVID at this point, which meant that my spittle was actually priming these people as they went in to get their, their content integration test. After that, I started getting, I was ill again, absolutely true. I was ill for three weeks. Um, I started getting these hallucinations. Um, this is... This is an interesting picture from East Denver. So one of the usability issues with um, uh, doing slides, right, is when you try and grab these pictures, sometimes it, d d if you, this is the weirdest kind of observational humor. But if you, do you sometimes find that you pull the wrong thing and rather than scaling up, you kind of sideways 
you sideways stretch the thing. So, so this is actually sideways stretched. Um, Frito Leg Buterin. So I actually pulled it very slightly and went, he looks healthier. <laughs> Look, so, so that's, that's, that's him stretched and that's him, that's him normal size, right? So, so then that's the first one I showed you. That's not him. That's, that's the Gruffalo uh, is scaled widely. But anyway, so this is sort of like algorithm. When people talk about machine learning and algorithmic improvements, right, we're like, Vitalik has like a very basic algorithmic improvement, which is bracket x comma y equals bracket 1.2x comma y, and that's, that's how you can, you can improve them. Anyway, so, so this is the main hallucination I had. This is, 90, this is 1995. Um, that's Richard Stallman, for those of you who don't know. Did anyone not know that was? I, I, I have to generationally fix this. Like some people like, I don't know who is, one of the mamas and the papas, I don't know. Could be, could be, could be Jim Henson, who knows? But anyway, um, so this is, this is, this is, uh, I come from the free software community, right? And like the idea of not using the software, not dogfooting, not using the software that you build on is, is an analysis. I mean, literally, I am just saying there, I was thinking of switching to Windows 95, and, uh, and Richard Storman there is grabbing my hair and curb stomping me to the ground for that. So he's a very, he's a, he's a cruel man. I mean, right, correct, but, but, but very, very cruel. Anyway, so, so we, we, we understand, right, why we do this, right? Why, don't, why do we use the software that perhaps ideologically we, w does not fit with, with what we're thinking? And the reason is we want to move fast, right? This is why we build these things out, right? That we use prepackaged pre software as a service so we can build on the shoulders of these people, maybe to undermine their business models, right? But, but we, we, we do it to, to move fast, break, and break things. I mean, so one of the things that I've taken from seeing what you folks have been doing is we've sort of gone past that point of view, right? Like we're, um, we're sort of now at the point where we're trying to, to fix things. Um, and so we've been using all of these centralized systems, centralized protocols, um, centralized services, uh, and now we're getting to the point where we can still move fast, and we can we can uh, we can we can work here and, and, and fix things, uh, including our use of Unicode. Um, but the problem is, is if we start moving fast and fixing stuff, if we are using all of these services and systems, what we're really doing is continuing to fix them. Right, because the data about our behavior and our usage is going outside of the system, like the sort of expropriation of data, and it's being used to fix and develop what, what, what they're doing. It's not, it's not making our stuff better. And even if the signal is just, yes, this stuff is still you know, up in the SLAs, it's still data and services that they can, they can use. So, so this is why um, I'm sort of advocating for more dog fooding in our environment. The, the term dog food, does everybody know the term dog food? Yeah, yeah of course we do. Um, but I'm going to have to explain it to you because I have three slides on that. Um, so, so the history of dog food is, is that back in the day, in the 90s, when Richard Stallman was beating me around the London streets, um, uh, this, was, this was in the period um, when everybody who was good hated Bill Gates, as opposed to the later period where everyone who was good loved Bill Gates because he worked well with children and stuff like that. And not now, where everybody who's crazy hates Bill Gates. It's like, we've seen a lot. Bill Gates is like Doctor Who. He goes through sort of different generations every, every year. Anyway, um, in, 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 the, in the, don't think about that because then you'll, is Steve Ballmer the master? I don't know. Anyway, so, so what we have here is a little explanation of eat your own dog food and it gives the history. What happened is Microsoft in the 90s had some pretty, pretty, I mean, actually unbelievably bad software and they said, look, we have to use it ourselves to learn and improve. It was actually the test manager for Microsoft Land Manager, which I can assure you was a terrible piece of software. And I'm surprised that they weren't all using Novell and they, they, they worked on it. And that's, that's what made Microsoft software suck slightly less. 
um, over that time period. In fact, and they would do all kinds of other cruel and torturous things in Microsoft. They actually, this is, this is also true. Um, it's all true. I just emphasize it's true when, anyway. Um, uh, uh, they would give developers deliberately slow machines, consumer machines, so that they wouldn't try, uh, they wouldn't forget about optimizing. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not, I'm not Bill Gates. I mean, well, I could be like, I could be middle-term Bill Gates. But anyway, okay, let's move on. So, um, so that's what dog fooding is. It's using the tools you built and, uh, uh, and learning from that. So let's, let's go a little closer to home now and kind of trying to feel the vibe of the room. Um, and uh, this, this is, this is I, wa I want to say, um, so who, who here, um, who's the DRI for IPFS update? Is there, are they here? Have they gone home? Okay, this makes this a lot easier. Okay, good. All right, because I was having to do a lot of calming here. I was going, Juan thought it was funny yesterday. Don't worry, it's not going to be a big deal. So um, when I first came, <laughs> so, okay, who here uses IPFS update? Yeah, not, 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 not so many. And, you know, I, I actually know that. You want to know how I know that? So um, this is IPFS updater. It's the thing that we advertise people should use to um, update their versions of IPFS. It's, it's really up there on the front page. Um, when I tried to use it to update um, IPFS update, uh, IPFS, um, this, 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 the, 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 there isn't an error here. Um, that, that's, that's what it does. It, 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 it just stopped, right? Um, and uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't crash, so that's good news, right, everyone, right? Yeah, um, uh, 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 but it, it, didn't, it didn't not continue, right? <laughs> like it didn't, it, okay, and the one thing I can summarize here is it did not update IPFS um, until I looked away and then I went back and actually it had updated IPFS. It, it, it had continued, but it had continued in a, a, a I, I came back in a day later and it had updated IPFS. And I wondered, um, in a sort of Alan Turing kind of way, how do we determine whether this is halting or not? So I set up a little GitHub action and tracked how long it takes for IPFS update to work. Um, and you'll notice for two things. One is, this is a fixed bug, right? This is not, we, we're not, this is, this is a blameless retro, right? Like, like, things are fine now. You don't have to worry. Don't tease the IPFS update person. It's, it's doing fine. But here, this is, this is not good. These are, this is seconds, right? So um, that one up there, that's, that's seven minutes to update. IPFS, um, which you know, IPFS is not is Kubo is not is not a big program. That's kind of problematic. So um, I, I I didn't. The other thing is I didn't tell anyone I was doing this. Right? I was not a good dog fooder. I did not report this bug. I did not do any of those things. I wanted to see how long it would be until something like this was noticed and. Um, and fixed, and as you can see, it was. It took about a month. I was a little curious as to like how long in the past um, this had taken, and I was also curious about had anybody else reported this bug that you can't update IPFS um, uh, using the standard IPFS updating thing. Um, and there was a bug. Um, it was reported. Uh, there was definitely some work going on here. Someone else had reported it. Um, it was Juan Bonet. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, so, so there were at least two people using IPFS update within the organization. Me, the new boy, and, and Juan. And one of the things I'd like to point out for you is that Juan was reporting bugs and using IPFS update on New Year's Eve. <laughs> So the way, the way I imagine this works is that basically Juan like does whatever he does for the whole year, and then at the end of the year, with like a glass of wine or something, goes. Oh, for me to update IPFS, let me just let me just dabble a little down with the down with the people. Ah! Um, so, so that was that was the story of IPFS updater. So, one of the reasons why we should dog food our code, like I could see everyone got really worried when I showed that graph. Like I was, no, it's fine, it's all right. We just have to, 
We just have to use our shit because otherwise we risk having a bug report, a bus factor of approximately two, and one of them's one. Um, so one of the things that I'm, I'm going to talk about this is that dog food is a really tight feedback, a food back mechanism. Uh, yeah, do you like it? It's good. I, I'm thinking about writing a book, a uh, software development book at O'Reilly uh, with that title. Anyway, so, so, so this is one of those things. We can have these very tight feedback loops. Um, I have a bad story about O'Reilly books I'll tell you about later in the bar. Um, uh, um, uh, so, uh, but we have other things, right? We have Probe Lab. We're getting better at this stuff, right? We have, a, we have dashboards. You probably have five or six dashboards right now, right? And um, uh, also, a little, a little side thing. How close am I to stopping you from having drinks? Not, it's okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, this is my cat. Um, and my cat, as you can tell, uh, it's called Dashboard. And the reason for that is my, uh, my spouse, Liz Henry, is, was release manager uh, for uh, Firefox at Mozilla. And obviously, you can imagine in group video calls, at some point, they would go, well, let's, uh, let's look at the dashboard. And you can completely derail a group call for a very long time by grabbing a cat and going, yes, let's look at the little thing. Like, oh, no, look, it's the little, oh, there he is with the, oh, oh. So I wanted, just in case you felt bad at this point, let's look at pictures of dashboards there. That's, uh, that's, that's not a great picture of me. Um, anyway, so, um, so dashboards are useful, right? Dashboards are great, and dashboards, most importantly, can look incredibly pretty, even when they're flashing millions of red lights at you. Um, this is from a Soviet water-cooled reactor, um, and this, this one, that's Chernobyl. So um, those people are having a great time looking at their dashboards. I mean, they're weirdly, it's weirdly, it's weirdly Game of Thrones. I don't know whether that's, a, anyway. So, uh, uh, yeah, but the risk with dashboards are twofold. One is you spend all your time going, we've got some really pretty dashboards. I think we know exactly what's going on. Um, and the other thing is, is when do you look at dashboards the most seriously? When you're in the car, right? Like at other points, dashboards are just interesting. That they don't have that, that, that profound, profound feedback look that I think um, uh, uh, dog fooding gives you, right? That when you're actually using the software and depending to a certain degree on the software you're building. Okay, live demo time. Time to, to show off exactly how uh, your software and our software they're building is, is, is working in this way. Okay. Nope, psych, I'm not gonna do a live demo. Um, <laughs> uh, for, for, for a couple of reasons, one, the tables are turned now, right? Like, I'm trying to make this thing that, like, the software is not going to work. And my experience working in the uh, Protocol Labs extended cinematic universe, as I do, is that whenever I come on stage to complain about something, one of you goes back in time nine months <laughs> and fixes it, right? Proposes a thing. I was going to do, I was coming to give a talk about how we should really link the JavaScript and the... Um, uh, the Kubo kind of environment together, and then you fucking implemented it. <laughs> had like a whole, so, so that was good. So I'm not going to do that because there's too much of a risk here that I would demo something and it all would all work fantastically. But I also want to like flip, flip the demo a little bit here. Like as I watched people building out demos and showing demos, um, I've seen like that moment of absolute fear and not just for the person on stage, like whenever anybody does a demo, I watch, like there's, there's a strange, there must be a, a collective noun for the noise of, of people clenching their butts when, uh, when a demo starts. Um, and we all feel it, right? Because everything is focused in on that moment. And what I want to do is to suggest that we can build a culture where this moment is a moment of zen-like peace, right? Like we're so confident in our software and how it works in a genuine environment where people are interacting with each other, um, that, that we're, absolutely, uh, we're absolutely calm. Of course, it means the rest of the time is absolutely riven with fear, right? Because you've, you've ended up having to ask all your friends to use this software, but maybe we can, we can get to that point. 
So um, here is, uh, 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 to, to give you an idea of what, what, what was going on, um, when everybody was demoing, and these are some of the demos they saw, I was in the background, like, downloading stuff and, and, and running it in the background and installing it. And um, uh, um, I, I, I did not, I did, it did not go well. So I tried to install or run each of these things, and, like, CID context isn't really an install thing, but I played around with it. And the only thing that, like, really totally went bang and worked was, was back or how. Um, this isn't a criticism, because this is my score for everything else in my trip. Um, like, basically nothing works for me, and I think it's probably not your fault, right? I'm probably actually an idiot. I don't know what Bakahau is doing. I guess, I guess they're targeting the idiot market, but that, that, is, my, that is my conclusion there, right? Like, like um, uh, so, so I wouldn't worry about that, but it's something, it's something to, to think about. Okay, so what am I trying to say here? Look, let's match our ambition and our aspirations with our actual, our actual tool use, right? Let's, if we really think this stuff can change the world, let's see if we can build and, and, and use it within our own environment. Let's build better food back mechanisms. And, and like when we feel that fear, right? When we feel that demo fear of like going, I don't know, I'm putting all my holiday pictures on IPFS, but oh my God, what if the web gateways aren't gonna work? Everybody at my party is gonna hate me, right? When we, <laughs> what a weird sitcom scenario. But yeah, um, when, when, when that happens, um, uh, let's, let's work out what that fear is, right? And, and, and with kindness, right? Let's work out like why it is that, that we, we kind of try and work around the very things that we're, we're building. So, so that's my little thing. I call it food back, as I say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do um, a little bit of work on this, and I'm going gonna, um, gonna to summarize a lot of these thoughts at this link tree um, thing that I put on. Of course I'm not! Good job! I just have a little trauma, okay? I'm just, I'm not, I'm not gonna become him. Um, okay, so, so more usefully, more, more usefully, um, uh, I think, I think, I think we can, um, we can, this was the bit where Juan said, yes, you totally have to do this to everybody. Um, so, so we can use the tools we build and offer to others. So we can use IPFS update, we can, we can just, you know, not, not just do the weirdnesses, actually live our dream. We can make small tools, like we could do a version of Linktree, right? We could like make it and like part, make it part of our maintenance cycle to have these little things. Um, we have PRMD, it just wasn't, it wasn't integrated into the products that we're, we're building. And we can use and share those things and we can have it as part of the way we work. And we can adapt, uh, adopt and support the commercial offerings of our allies and friends. I mean, this is a much harder leap, right? Really, when we're talking about GitHub and Slack and things like this, and we're not gonna be able to build alternatives to that. But we can encourage those people who are building those on the stack that we, oh, guys, the long COVID from East Denver, I swear. Um, and more usefully, um, uh, the Falcon Foundation, uh, we, we're putting together a little small team um, and resources to uh, help with this. You exit, some of you may talk to Steph Magdalinski. We'll, we can try and offer you the resources for usability, user testing, food back, um, and, and what have you. And we're going to try and shift dev grants and the work we do at the Falcon Foundation with the Decentralized Web to support more of a sort of maintenance culture, um, provide more internet, uh, interop and more stack building. And yes, <laughs> I will return to haunt you with screenshots of, um, of, of you know, bootleg probe lab dumps. Um, so so um, 
Uh, you may at this point be wondering what my job is, and I really am not sure. But um, traditionally, the areas that I've worked in um, are, are these. Um, this is, uh, the, um, and I, I live in the very small intersection between these three things. And you've, you've seen here some of the work I do in software development practices and, um, and human rights abuses. Um, so uh, the other bit that you probably don't know is one of the reasons why I get kind of excited about this stuff is you're at the cusp, right? You're at the cusp. All of these things that we promised about IPFS are actually happening. And communities, uh, such as the people that we work with, people who are actually marginalized communities, exchanging sensitive data, wanting a censorship resilient system, are coming to us saying that the existing centralized systems do not fit our threat model. So I have to have conversations with them about whether IPFS and our stack are a genuine alternative to that. And I want to be able to tell them, yes, yes it is. Like the amazing work, the thing I'm coming away from and I'll be able to tell them from this, this event is, is double hashing. Double hashing is an amazing step up in the privacy of readers on the IPFS network. And if we can continue to trust our technology enough to use it in our lives, I think we can begin to get to the point where we can genuinely turn to people whose lives will really depend on this software and say to them, yeah, this is good to go. You can, you can take this code and change the world with it. So thank you very much. And um, uh, if you want to talk about any of these things, um, come and talk to me. I'll be having a coronary over in the corner of the, uh, of the meeting. And if, you, thank you. and if you meet the IPFS update person, tell him I'm sorry. I was just